All right. Hello there, ladies, gentlemen, gamers, and fellow League of Legends ranked climbers. It's been two weeks, and everybody knows what that means. That means it's time for me to go over the patch notes once again, because I know how we all like to grind the ranked ladder and get high up in that elo to get all the honeys, to get all the nice ladies. I'm saying different words than what I would usually say because I heard in the beginning of these YouTube videos, if you say a bad word, they blacklist you. As if I'm not blacklisted already. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen gamers, we are here once again to go over the patch notes. This time we are on patch 13.6. So as always, to put a little preface here, there's been no League of Legends pass out. It's actually been quite a bit of time since the last League of Legends pass has been released. So because of that, I actually have spent not a lot of time playing League of Legends. The last time I played was the last pass, which was a while ago. So I'm a little rusty on what's good and what's not. Uh, a lot of that hopefully will be shown. Uh, a lot of these changes, hopefully I can run through quickly because we are starting late today. But uh, hopefully I'll still have some pretty cool insights. Hopefully we'll have some pretty good changes. And uh, I believe this is the patch where we get the new support champion, which I will talk about for sure, even though I've reacted to him on YouTube already. But regardless, let's see what's going on. Setting ablaze the hearts and autos of his allies while giving his enemies headaches. Oh, let's see if he does that. Milio, the gentle flame, gives a whole new meaning to the term friendly fire with his release this patch. So we are getting Milio this patch. I'm very excited because it's actually a support, but we'll go over that in a little bit. But wait, there's more. We also have quite a few changes aimed at addressing the current early game bot lane skirmish meta with adjustments to AD season drakes. Okay, so this is where, again, my weakness comes in of I haven't played, so I haven't noticed what's happening. Uh, the last time, oh my goodness, I'm getting called on Discord. Let me put myself his way. Um, but regardless... The last time I basically did anything with um with League of Legends was when mages were infesting the bot lane. They were infesting the bot lane and bot lane was not good. So, it sounds like some new bullshit has happened, which I'm not too happy about. But I guess we're going to read about it. I don't really know what this means. Does this mean like they say they're actually changing ADCs and not mages, so I'm assuming a lot of early game ADs are good, and they're fighting over dragons too early, which I thought would be a good thing, because the general trend of League has so far been, like, early game, they don't like late game, they barely like mid game. Like, games have sped up. I saw this video of Leona's cooldowns, right, back in, like, Season 4 when I first started, versus now. The cooldown of like her Q went from like 10 seconds to 3 seconds. Like, what the fuck? But anyway, they're adjusting bot lane. Hopefully it's for the better, but I'm assuming it might be for the worse because that's all they love to do to my role. Uh, a stunning new skin line thematic, which uh, we're going to talk about. A vaguely worded update on blind pick. Interesting. And a new mythic shop rotation. As a reminder, this is the last patch that League and TFT will be playable on a 32-bit client. So basically, anyone with a toaster, make sure you get rid of your toaster. I never thought I'd see the, the day where they make League not available on toasters. But regardless, it's here. You know, I honestly believe uh, this is good. They should update League more and make it not for toasters, because at this point, people have good enough computers to where they can meet, make League at the baseline level a little bit better. Because old hardware always holds back the new one. But anyway, let's see what we got. TFT changes, no one gives a shit. The skin line, we'll talk about later. For right now, we're going to talk about Milio. So like I said, I already went over his uh, stuff on YouTube. I have my reaction on there. But let's actually go through all of his shit. Let's actually go through all of his kit. Now let me get this up on the, U or on the screen. Let me pull it up here. You can see how prepared I am for these. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to put everything up on here except the trailer and the theme. The trailer and the theme we don't care about. Actually, let, let me play his theme. We'll, we'll play his theme on, on repeat because why not? This is the Milio patch, so you know what? We're going to have his theme playing. It's a very nice theme, too. We see a lot of art with it. But anyway, let's get it up here. Oh, shit. There it is. Look at him. 
Look at him! He's a little fairy boy here! This is all his concept art. Here he looks a little bit like a girl, honestly, but... Very nice theme. It's really loud. Holy shit. Let's lower that. But anyway, uh, his abilities run down. So, to put it bluntly, he is actually a support, which I'm very happy about. He is actually a fucking support, which is good. So let's see this. Stick with me, I'll keep you warm. So his passive fired up. Basically, he gives anyone that his abilities hit that is an ally a little mini ignite. A burst of initial damage and then an ignite on the auto or spell that hits the enemy next. Really good. This to me can be pretty strong if the numbers are there and if there's no cooldown on this. If there's a cooldown on this, I think it makes it fair. If anything, they might add it later on because looking at his whole kit in general, it seems a little weird, but I'll say that at the end. But anyway, his passive is basically ignite. So his Q, Ultra Mega Fire Kick. He kicks a little ball at them. He, his little, uh, what do they call it here? Hold on. His little Fumigos. So he's very Spanish themed. As you could tell by the soccer. So he has his little Fumigos, which he kicks at you. So the Fumigos basically have a little bit of a knockback, it looks like. But I don't know if it's an actual knockback. It says it's a knockback, but I don't know if Yasuo can ult on this. It, it looks like he can, though. It definitely looks like he can. So it's a knockback and a slow AoE, which is not bad. I think it only knocks back the first thing hit. But, uh, so it is a little bit of a skill shot, but not bad. Again, if the numbers are there, it's a decent poke. If not, it's decent CC as well. A little bit of a catch out tool. Not great, but okay. So next up, the W, the Cozy Campfire. I think one of the biggest parts of his kit. Now, again, I'm going to keep saying this often, and you're going to notice why at the end. I'm going to mention it at the end once we go after result. Uh, it really depends on the numbers here in terms of healing. So basically, you put a little Fumigo here. And the Fumigo travels around like a victor ult. You can target a teammate, it'll follow them, and it'll give them extra range up to 20% based on your level, and it'll constantly heal them. Now, not just them, anyone else in the AoE, but you can set it to follow a specific person. Holy shit, this music is so fucking loud, man! There's like no in between. I can't make it low, I can't make it like high. Holy shit, but anyway. Yeah, Cozy Campfire, this is the thing that really makes him stand apart so far. Obviously, his passive is just like a little bit of a damage buff. It's not any really steroid. Like, it doesn't really buff anyone in any way aside from just giving them more damage. But this is kind of a steroid. It gives you more range. There's not almost anything else in the game, champion-wise, that I think gives you more range to another player. I mean, there's stuff that enhances your range, like, you know, Jinx Q, Kogma W, Twitch Ult... But that's just for you. We've never had something like this where you can enhance other people's range, so this is pretty unique. And again, the healing might be good, it might be bad, we'll see. I'm assuming it has to be good though because of the nature of the rest of his kit. So his E, what is his E? Warm hugs, he hugs you with the Fumigo. So the E is literally just Karma E. It gives you move speed and it gives you a shield. That's pretty much it. It's really just Karma E. I don't know how it's different than Karma E, it might be worse, it might be better in terms of move speed, in terms of uh, shielding, I don't know. But it's literally just Karma. They literally just ripped it from Karma. So you could tell the, the League team they're starting to uh, run out of a little bit of ideas, but that's fine because they're going to do reworks anyway. But anyway, that's his E, pretty straight, pretty simple. And now his ult, the big hoopla of his kit. Breath of Life, he unleashes a wave of soothing flames that heal and remove crowd control from allies in range. So, this is probably a big nuke heal. The, he, the heal doesn't really matter. The heal is nice if it's like a big Soraka ult, like level heal, but like an AoE. It better be greater than Soraka ult, first of all. If it does not heal more than Soraka ult, it's stupid. But uh, the biggest thing with it is it cleanses. It cleanses anyone in range. It's an AoE Mikhail's Crucible, which supports barely build Mikhail's anyway, so... This is good. This is really good. Now, Riot is very scared to put this in the game. They said they're going to make the cooldown on this extremely long. So to compensate, the healing better be great. Now, my fear is that you're only going to... Because CC happens, right? Like, the main way it looks like you play Milio is you have to stay near your teammates, kind of behind them, kind of in the middle, never in the front. You're never going to be in the front, right? You're either going to be way behind or in the middle just so you can keep pumping out stuff. 
you want to be as far away from the enemy as possible while uh, near enough to maybe hit your Q, but not even because your Q can pass through people. I don't really know the range. Let me, let me look at the range of the Q again. So the Q is decent range. If it hits someone, it extends, it looks like. But overall, you really just want to stick around your teammates in the back, especially behind the ADC, if not next to them. So that's where I think some of the difficulty is going to be. And the next part is with his ultimate specifically, right? Let's just say people can massively misuse this, right? They might use it to cleanse one person, whereas the enemy can just CC three other people. So that's my main fear. This is a very skillful ult, because again, you're cleansing CC, but after you cleanse CC, there's not like an immunity to where they can't get CC'd again, like, you know, a second after. If you get CC'd right after this, it's going to stick. So... Milios really have to be careful with how they use their ult. I really feel like his ult is going to be the make or break for his kit because think about it this way, right? He has one little thing that pokes. This is like his only damaging ability. The W heals and gives range, so it's relying on the ADC. The E is just a shield with movement speed. That's almost nothing. So his kit is looking very blunt. His two damaging things are his Q and his passive. He has no other damage. So this is a support that heavily, heavily relies on the ADC. And if the ADC is not there, or if his numbers aren't good, if his damage isn't good, you're not going to win lane. If his healing isn't good, you're not going to survive lane. But he can't be a poke and a heal champion, so they have to focus in on one. I'm assuming they're going to focus in on the healing more than anything. I doubt this Q is going to nuke you with his passive. His passive is probably going to be doing more than his Q realistically. But ultimately, I think he's more of a support that keeps you safe and protects you rather than harasses the enemy. So this little thing they said in the beginning about him being a headache for the enemies, I hope that's true. I hope it's not like a bad headache. I hope it's like a little annoying headache. But anyway, this kit looks fine as long as the numbers aren't bad. This is honestly a big thing of you can adjust the numbers to balance him. You don't have to rework him like Yumi 50 times or Felios, right? You can literally just adjust the numbers and I feel like the numbers can be pretty easily adjusted. Now, granted, you have to count for items and stuff, but overall, he ain't looking bad. So the next thing up we have here, Milio the Gentle Flame. I'm not going to read this, but basically, I'll give you a synopsis of Milio's lore. Milio is an Ixtal. He's an Ixtal with this blue J from regular show right here. So he's an Ixtal, the same uh, region as Kiana, and like Kiana, he has the Axioms. Except Kiana can use every Axiom, and she's a master of it. Milio is the master of the flame axiom, and that's it. So not not all the elements, only one. And obviously he he heals. He's a you know he's a little good boy. His whole lore is he has to leave his village because he wants to master his power to help his village and you know get them out of poverty or whatever. I honestly feel like it's a big nod to uh, Ukraine and what's happening there with the refugees and them moving and everything. They're trying to paint them in a good light. Uh, you know, getting the real world into the video games because that's the best thing to do. But it's also just a little feel-good thing. Uh, it pushes forward the lore of uh, Ixtal, at least, so that's not too, too bad. But overall, that's basically his lore. He's also... I believe he met someone in the lore, too. I don't remember if he met Rengar or not, but... I know he met someone in the lore. I think it might have been Nico. I don't know, though. I read it, but I forgot it. But anyway, that's basically his lore. He's uh, going to Ixtal and becoming a fire master and... He's going to meet Kiana and probably put her in her place. But anyway, overall, Milio's kit, pretty good. I hope the numbers are good. If the numbers are good, he's going to be a good support. And ADCs will actually have a supporting champion that is specifically for them. He's not going to go mid. He's not going to go top because the more range your character has, the more you benefit from being with him. Or the more he benefits from being with you also. And who has range? ADCs. So please to dear God, don't fucking do some weird ass shit with him where he goes mid or he goes top. I'm very scared if that happens. But overall, I'm very excited to get supported by him. I'm very excited. He looks very good. So now, finally moving on to the first ADC they're touching this patch, Ash. I feel like Ash, I know they nerfed her last patch because support Ash was stupid. Now, I hope they didn't over nerf ADC Ash, but let's, I, I assume they did. So I'm hoping to see a buff here, but let's see. Uh, last patch, Ash was nerfed for support, and the goal was to preserve her power level as an AD carry. We were mostly successful in hitting these goals, but she's still a bit worse off. Of course she was. You you took away her main tool. Her main tool, no matter what, ADC or support, is her W. So here's us making good on that promise. And they also nerfed her ult last time, too. I remember that, too. So, 
Damage against frosted enemies. Instead of 110, it's now 115. So the way Ash works is she doesn't randomly crit. If you hit them once, then you automatically do uh, more damage to them with everything else, and that increases with crit chance. Now, if you actually crit, you just slow them more. But overall, she's a very consistent dealing damage ADC. It's just she, likes, she takes very long to ramp up. But when she ramps up, I believe she does more damage than regular ADCs because of her crit scaling. So, what does this mean? She's getting 5% more damage. That's really all it means. So 75 plus 115 is about 190%. Add IE on top of that, which is I believe is another 35 so that's about 225% of damage instead of 220, I believe, or no, I'm getting that wrong. So it's, no, no, it's 220 instead of 215. So it's 215 before, now it's 220, so slight buff. And it actually does help her early because it's on her base amount, so this is pretty good. It's a little weenie change, but it is a buff nonetheless, so Ash is a little better off for wear. Not bad. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, Asol, okay. I don't know what they're doing, but I already see the wall of text, so I know they're gonna nerf him. So, I mentioned this last time, and I was really scared they were gonna nerf him again, because Asol is very fun, and if he's very fun, that means he's probably pretty good. He is a late game scaler for sure, but I feel like they're gonna say he scales too quickly. I really, really hope they do not touch his passive. His passive cannot be touched. Everything else, you can adjust it. Because again, he's supposed to be this ultra-scaling late game monster, right? Just don't touch his passive. But they're, they're gonna nerf him. There's no way they're not gonna nerf him. He still feels really strong. Even though I haven't played, I've seen people play Aesol. It looks unfair sometimes. But god, they did so good with this rework. Like, I actually love new Aesol. I miss the balls, but new Aesol is just so fucking good. One of the best reworks they did. I like I actually want to play mid just to play him, and I am. Whenever they release the new event, I'm definitely gonna play that shit. But anyway, let's see how bad they're nerfing him. Please don't be bad. E cooldown increased. Our upgrade stardust requirement increased, CC duration decreased, cast range decreased. So is getting a lot of attention, both positive and negative. While he's pretty used to he's pretty used to given the gravity of his stellar personality. We're aiming to lessen the frustrating moments he can create, like using his ability to stall freeze waves for an extended period of time and reduce the potency of his team fight wombo combo. His team fight is really fucking strong, honestly. So what are they doing? The cooldown of V is staying at 12. Honestly, that's fine. It's fair. It's fair. This is your main thing. You should really choose whether you're going to clear the wave or use it to harass and like attack in a fight. So nerfing it to 12 kind of fixes that. So that's fine. Just don't make it any worse, but that's fine. I'll accept that. That is acceptable. And then his R. So to get the Big Daddy R drop on your cock, you're going to need 100 instead of 75. That's fair. I feel like it's you get it really, really slowly. But um, the fact of the matter is, I feel like you don't get it that many times at all. In a game, you're probably going to get about 500-ish stacks, I would say, around there. If not less, around 500 or less, right? So at most, you're going to use the super ult five times. But you got to remember, you're getting 100 stacks and then you're not using the ult immediately. So it's not like you're using it at 100, you're using it at 200. Sometimes you might use it when you have 125 because you're over stacking. You might use it at 250. So realistically, you might use this three or four times a game. Uh, excuse me. Whereas before, I think it was like a hard set at least four in a normal length game. Now it could be three to four. So you might be losing one cast of it, which honestly is fair because the amount of damage it did and you basically were guaranteed to hit anyone in a team fight if someone's not split pushing. And even if they were, you might hit them still. I think it's not bad. I think it's fair. Again, there's nothing here that's egregious yet, but I hope they keep it that way. So what are they doing? The stun duration is going to one second. That's fine because again, you're guaranteed pretty much to hit it. Uh, falling star. Oh no, falling star is the first one, so that's a little harder to hit. But honestly, it increases. So again, not too bad. Uh, cast range is a little less. That's fine. The sky's descend is basically getting the same treatment just to keep it consistent. And honestly, that's fine. If they don't nerf him anymore, it's fine. And I have a feeling that they are very scared to nerf him because Asol is one of the like they said poster children of this game. He is one of the people 
that gets people into this game, but then they never play him because he was fucking ass and he was too hard. However, now they fix that problem completely and I really hope they don't make him ass. I hope they keep him good because, you know, they need all the players they can get because, you know, everyone always says League is dying, League is dying, right? But I think, uh, you know, they just need to keep ASL fun. He's new. They did good. Just give us something. Have, have us have something good if you're going to take away all my ADCs. But overall, these are nerfs. Yeah, but they're not too bad. It's honestly not too bad. Again, if they don't do anything more, if they don't touch the passive, I can see them touching the W. I can see them touching the Q. Just don't touch the passive. Don't touch the E and the ult anymore. But acceptable. I don't like it, but it's acceptable. Mundo! I think Mundo kind of sucks. Uh, Mundo is either stat checking you or he's doing nothing. That's basically the extent of, uh, of all Mundo does. So, they're probably going to buff. Let's see what they're going to do. Unless someone found some like secret OP build on Mundo, I'm pretty sure they're going to buff. Base health regen increased. Health regen scaling decreased. W recast timer decreased. E damage to jungle monsters increased. So it sounds like they want him to go into the jungle again, which means his top lane is kind of whatever. And because they're increasing his base health regen, not only does this help his top, it helps his jungle too, because he's going to be a little bit more healthy. So let's see their explanation for it. The good doctor has been feeling a bit under the weather early game. But on the other hand, he turns into a surgeon of death come late game. I don't really agree with that. We're turning Mundo into, in a way, we're tuning him in a way that should help smooth out his power curve throughout the game, while giving him some medical tools to help him in the jungle. I thought they really disliked Mundo jungle, so I'm a little surprised to see them giving back to it. But anyway, what are they doing? Health regen slightly up, scaling slightly down, so again, they're adjusting it. I wouldn't call it a nerf, it's more of an adjustment. And then the recast timer for W is 0.5. That's kind of whatever. I think that's really just like a non-change and then the e is uh going up by 50 percent to 200 so it's a 25 percent buff pretty much uh not bad well not even 25 percent if we're looking at it by itself it's like 33 percent so really not bad uh you know i could definitely see mundo in the jungle again is it good no is it fun probably overall mundo slightly better for wear nothing crazy but not bad Galio, this character sucks ass. This character blows, and I feel like ever since the rework he lost his identity, he's pretty much just a support now. He's not a mid laner unless he's a very hard counter pick. And even then, who the fuck are you counter picking with this guy? I don't really think it matters. So, what are they doing, Tim? They better buff him. Galio's been, uh, well, let's see what they're doing. W magic and physical damage reduction increased, equal down, decreased. They're making him more of a support. That's what they're doing. Galio's been stuck in limbo recently and not the fun party game kind of. After 12.10, he doesn't deal enough damage to then carries by himself, but he's not durable enough to survive for multiple spell rotations. As the Colossus of Demacia, we'd rather buff up his beefiness than make him a burst mage, so they're making him a support by making him more tanky. So, the magic damage and physical damage reduction is going up by well the magic damage is going up by a lot more because you know his whole lore is he's against magic he counters magic but it's good to see he has some physical reduction too because he's a giant fucking stone colossus so that makes sense the scaling is going up too so you are incentivized to build damage on him which is sad but it is what it is uh but the physical one is going up by 2.5 percent the magic one is going up by five percent but the scaling is going up too so honestly I think this is pretty good. I think his tankiness is going to be pretty good to at least survive more stuff. This is not bad. This is definitely not bad. And then the cooldown of Justice Punch is going down by one second. It's good. It's not bad. These are okay changes. These are okay buffs. Again, pushing him more towards support, obviously. But uh, helping his mid if you're crazy enough to go in mid. But you should probably go in support and just build damage anyway. Because that's what everyone does. I hate it. It's a good change. But I don't like it because now that means more support full damage Galios. But it is what it is. Talon. Uh, what do I think of Talon? The main thing I think of when I think of Talon is just, hey, this is the guy who had the highest rate of getting first blood. I remember they used to release like these league statistics back in the day, where they would tell you, oh, this champion's the most likely to get a Penta. This champion's the most likely to get first blood. It was Talon. And then this champion's most likely to make you want to shoot your own mother. 
which is uh, apparently in my history, Zareth. But regardless, I think Talon is a very uh, assassin by the book sort of character. And in my opinion, assassins all kind of fall off late game. Number one, because team fighting happens. Assassins are supposed to pick off people. It's harder to do in team fights anyway. They're either dive bombers who go in, get the kill, and die. Or they're stealth artists where they go in, they get the kill, they escape. Right? Those are basically the two main types of assassins I see. Talon is pretty much the one who can get out. I would classify him as like maybe along the lines of Kha'Zix, where he can get resets and get out, except he doesn't have resets, he just jumps over walls. But um, you definitely have to be skillful with them because you have to use different walls. It's not like Kha'Zix where you just get a straight up reset. Uh, but overall, I would say Talon is definitely on the better side of Assassins. However, I feel like late game, he kind of falls off a little bit. So if anything, I would like to see them buff his late game. Or if they're not going to do that, really, really drive home his early game. Really drive that shit home. Because if he's not really going to be used late game, his fun time should be early to mid game, which is what Pantheon is. So let's see what they're doing. Base mana increased. Okay, passive damage increased. AD ratio increased. L plus ratio. W mana cost decreased. Okay, so they're buffing his early game. So, Talon currently struggles to interact with the minion wave in oppressive mid lane matchups. These changes should allow him to have more mana to farm with. His Rake. I always love the ability name for that. Rake. And distance uh, while helping his passive damage with base power and ratio. Jungle Talon has fewer mana issues, so this shouldn't affect him too much. So, okay. So, basically, they're helping lane Talon, even though I think Talon, honestly, through and through, is probably a better jungler, if anything else. Because look at his fucking E. His E looks like it was made for the jungle, but how much are they buffing this? So, his passive is going to 80 to 280. So, it's getting 5 damage early. Big whoop de doo And then 200 to 210 bonus AD. So, very small changes. Um, one of them is scaling. One of them is base. The base one kind of sucks. 5 damage. What's 5 damage, right? Overall, kind of wiener. And then the mana cost on his W. It's going down by 5. Uh potentially kind of wiener but he's also getting base mana too so not as wiener but overall these talent buffs are pretty wiener pretty wiener change okay oh my god we're getting into the thick of it they're actually changing vein no fucking way no fucking way no fucking way if they are doing anything to vein it better by god be a buff i do not think vein is op vein is one of the perfect examples of a champion that fills a niche very well Bane excels almost as, as, you know, almost better than any other ADC. There's some ADCs that can match her, like Kogma, and maybe even AP Varus. But Bane excels at killing tanks. If you are going a team with Malphite, a team with Scion, a team with uh, Orn, Bane is your girl to handle that team. Bane eats ass. However, she eats ass in general, but especially the ass of tanks, so she's the perfect definition of an AD that scales into the late game. It's pretty good late game, too. She'll obviously lose against burst people, unless she outplays them, obviously, because she's very skill-capped. But she could definitely lose to a Jin, to a Draven, because they'll just two-shot her anyway, right? By the time she gets the third auto out, she's fucking dead, unless she, you know, condemns them onto a wall. But overall, Vayne, even though she's scary late game, if you leave her alone, she's dealable with. But she excels at handling tanks better than anyone else. In, like, you know, 1v1s with another AD, you could lose. You definitely could lose. Even though Vayne is very strong, she could probably 4-shot people, if not 5-shot them. But Vayne obviously has a very defined niche, and they do it very well. Vayne is very weak until she hits her power spike anyway, so... Vayne is through and through just a good ADC. But she's a hard ADC, so they better not nerf her. If they nerf her, I don't think she's OP. I don't really see Vayne being used. Vayne, to me, has to have a good support, not a mage support. Maybe they're going to buff her with Milio, or maybe they're preemptively nerfing her because Milio is coming out. And they expect her to do really good with him. I don't know. Honestly, I have no clue. I, I just really hope it's not a nerf. I really hope that. But let's see what they're doing. Passive bonus move speed increased. Oh my god. Q bonus damage increased. Holy shit. Empowered auto attack duration decreased. Okay, that's fair. And W damage adjusted. Okay, that's interesting. Let's see what they're going to say about this. I'm actually very curious about this. 
Vayne's been struggling in all skill brackets recently for a few seasons. Well, yes, of course, she's against mages that bully her out early, she gets no help, and games don't last long enough for her to reach her fantasy, so of course she's not doing good. <coughs> Excuse me. Her passive hasn't stood the test of time against more mobile champions, that's true. So we want to give her some more chase potential while allowing her to use her Q more defensively. Okay. We're also giving Vayne a bit more AD scaling on her Q to support her more AD focused builds. So basically the builds that no one goes because everyone goes on hit Vayne anyway. So we're going to see if they're going to buff it enough to dethrone on hit Vayne, but I doubt it. Unless the numbers are crazy. Uh, which have been weak since critical strike chance was removed from Vayne's Q. However, we want to curb her potential power in the top lane, so we're bringing down her percent health damage as well. What? So W is not adjusted, it's nerfed. What are they saying? Well, we'll see. We're going to see. So the bonus move speed from passive, Night Hunter. It's going from 30 to 45. Now, a lot of people will get confused by this, right? A lot of people might think this is a wiener change. This is not a wiener change. 30 to 45 move speed, hell, even 5 move speed sometimes can be the difference between life and death. It could be the difference between like a champion not catching up on you. This is actually very important, and the pure fact is, this is further upgraded by her ult. So, we're gonna see if they, they improve the ult or if the ult still goes to 90, but... If the ult just gives a flat increase to the base amount, and it's gonna be like 105 now when you're ulting, that's gonna be insane. But the fact that it's 45 is really good. Movement speed is very sleeper, underrated, overpowered stat. Base move speed or any move speed whatsoever that you don't have to itemize for is very, very strong. A lot of characters in mid that have high base, base move speeds have higher win rates just because they can roam more often. It's crazy. It's crazy how much move speed matters. But regardless, this is a really, really good change. I very much like this. So the Q... Let's see what the Q is doing. So the Q is, oh my sweet dear god, they're omega buffing this shit. Instead of 60% of your AD, it's going to 75. So you're getting 15% more damage level 1 off the rip. That's really good. And then late game, it's going from 80 to 115. That's 35% more damage. Holy Jesus, that's a lot. Now, granted, they are gunning the duration. Instead of 7 seconds, it's, it's you know, doing for 3. But honestly, with the move speed change, you're going to catch up to people anyway. And Q is a movement ability, so you're going to be hopefully near them anyway. If not, you're going to go closer to them. And with the move speed, you're going to catch up to them. I honestly think changing it to 3 seconds, obviously it, it hurts in some situations. But for the trade-off we're getting, I'd gladly take this. Because... It just makes sense. When you're using Q, you're not going to hold it for 7 seconds. 90% of the time when you're queuing, you're going to auto them right after because you're going to be on top of them, boxing them, or you're using it to get away. At that point, it doesn't matter. So this is an insane change that's really good, and the nerf doesn't even really matter. Unless you're trying to get minions, obviously. Unless you're, like, running to lane and you're trying to get, like, the caddy minion and you're not there yet. But anyway, that is a really good change. So really good passive change, really good Q change. The W. I hate how they're calling it an adjustment when they're probably just going to nerf it, so let's see how bad it is. Percent health damage is going from 12% to 10%. Honestly, this is not too, too bad. I mean, obviously, this really pushes Vayne more towards a crit build. He's still pretty good at dealing with tanks, but if you're not building on hit Jinso's Vayne, you're, I don't know if you're going to be as good dealing with some of the extreme tanks. Obviously, overall, you're going to do more damage to most people, and you're going to shred tanks no matter what eventually. But overall, this brings a good question of, is Crit Vein good again? These changes, honestly, are really, really fucking strong. Like, aside from the W nerf, which they're taking off two damage, but the W nerf by itself isn't really anything. The biggest thing is the AD percentage on the Q. So taking off the 2% to me wouldn't have mattered if you still built on hit. But if you're building Crit now, I think it matters more. But overall... These are really good Vayne buffs. Holy shit, I'm just going to be straight up honest. These look like really good. I think Vayne is going to be pretty good after this, if not better than she is. This is really good. Okay, Vinegar. So I heard Vagar is an issue. I heard the instant bans right now have been Vagar and Yumi. And ironically enough, I think it's Vagar's support, but I don't know. But I heard he's an issue, which is very sad because I don't want to see my boy get nerfed. 
But I'll be honest, he is kind of a little ridiculous. So let's see what they're doing. They're probably going to nerf him because I've heard a lot of people complain about him despite not playing the game for a couple weeks. Base health decreased. Base armor decreased. W base damage decreased. All these are kind of fair, but let's go into it. With great range comes great power. <laughs> so they did increase his Q range. I haven't played it because like I said, there's no pass. I haven't played League, but the Q range buff is really good. It helps his mid. It helps his support. It literally helps everything. It was probably a really good change that pushed him over the edge. Vagar is standing tall in mid lane, but even taller in bot lane. He's probably going ADC too, realistically. With his huge power spike and popularity, he's actually become a relatively common bot laner with extremely high win rates. By bot laner, they mean ADC, or he's taking up the role of the ADC, which is tragic. Unfortunately, we can't have him be head and shoulders above the competition, so we're cutting him down to size. This is so fucked up. By reducing his early all in power, which is more consistent when paired as a support. So they literally are saying they want Vagar to be a support. Oh my god. So his base, health, his base health is going down by 25. That's fine. The armor is what hurts him the most. The armor going from 21 to 18. Ironically enough, they say they want him to go support. This hurts his support too because, you know, if you're in a bot lane with the physic, a main damage physically dealing champion and you have less armor, you might as well go mid because you're against AP at that point. So they are really nerfing his bot lane here. And then the W magic damage is uh, going down by 15. Honestly, this is fine. Vagar scales anyway. Unless you make the damage on the base really, really low to where he has no early game whatsoever. I think any damage you take off is kind of negligible because you're getting it back anyway. Just through the passive and just through how hard he scales. Uh, excuse me. Overall, these are fine. Uh, the biggest nerf to me is the armor. The armor hurts because the less armor you have, the more you feel it if you gain or lose it, because that's the way the system works in League of Legends. So overall, I think for sure, Big Arbalane is hard worse. I don't know if ADC is going to be worse. I don't know if support's going to be worse, because both have to interact with the enemy. I guess ADC less so, because ADC could just like farm. And I, you know, I say ADC even though he's not building physical, but he is the all damage carry. Overall, I actually think this probably pushes him more towards mid than anything. I can still see people going AD. I can honestly see them going support even less, though. But overall, uh, kind of sucks, but these are whatever. Biggest one is the armor. Okay, Yumi. So, the rework landed. The rework definitely landed. I haven't seen how it's been going. I haven't really heard anything, although I heard Yumi is an instant ban. So, I think it might have landed too well, but let's see. Because, again, I haven't played Q cooldown decreased, mana cost increased, missile speed decreased, range decreased, R shield duration added, bonus resistances, <coughs> excuse me, decreased. So her rework came out on the powerful side because this character cannot be balanced the way she is. While she lost a lot of offensive threat, her poke and burst survivability made it unclear what opponents could do versus a Yumi and her new best friend, so you can never kill them. Final chapter's bonus resistances, which were added to make Yumi feel a bit safer, ended up removing a clear point of weakness. We're removing the bonus effect and we'll be monitoring how players on both teams feel. So she should be more killable with her AD. That's fine. So the Q kind of looks like it's getting giga buffed. Well, not giga buffed, but mega buffed because it's 6.5 at all ranks. That's fine. Uh, the mana cost is going up to 100. That's a very steep cost. The missile speed unattached is lower, which I already thought you weren't going to land it anyway if it was unattached, but they really wanted to drive that home. And then the missile speed wad attached, or while well, enhanced, is a little less. So they really want to put some counterplay to the Q, which is fine. I think it's a very annoying ability. And the max range is a lot less. Well, not a lot less, but a decent chunk less. So overall, her Q is actually really worse in a lot of ways. I got baited by the cooldown. Her Q is pretty much a lot worse. And then her R. Over heal shield duration. So instead of 3 seconds, it's half. The shield will last the full duration of the spell 3.5 seconds plus this amount of time. So overall, it can last 5 seconds. That's not bad. But now, the person does not get resistances, which I'm really sad I wasn't here for this, but it is what it is. That is a lot of resistances. Holy shit. But anyway, that's all the changes for champions. A lot of nerfs. Vayne pretty much got the only good thing in my eyes. Everyone else kind of just got fucked. Except Ash, but Ash's were negligible. Very little changes here, honestly. And the biggest ones were to Vayne, surprisingly enough. I never thought I would say that. But anyway, let's see what they're doing to ADCs, because I see more shit here. So, 
The 13.1 micro patch gave ADC players a nice shot of excitement with some stronger defensive tools plus earlier access to Navori and IE. Turns out earlier access to incredibly strong items is a recipe for overpowered roll. Are they serious? You've had your fun fellow ADC players. Time for the nerfs. Oh, here we go. Okay, so Bloodthirster. They're going to nerf this ship because people were building its second, third item. If you're building it that early, they don't want healing to be a problem again. And healing is mainly, mainly useful in the early game. So it's kind of a, a weird sort of niche at this point, right? Healing is most useful in the early game, but Riot doesn't want it to be in the early game. So they're probably going to nerf it, but in the late game, it's not as good. So why would you get it when it's not as good? You want to get it when it's going to be at its strongest, which is early, but they don't want it to be strongest at its early. But the nature of healing works exactly in that way, at least to me. So they're probably going to nerf Bloodthirster. They're probably going to... I don't know what they're going to do, honestly. I don't think they should nerf it, but I don't agree that ADC is an overpowered role, at least right now. I, I haven't played in a bit, so maybe I could be wrong, but... I do understand the frustration where you can't really kill the AD in lane because they're just going to build BT and just sustain it all and try and, you know, reach their late game power spike, which who knows if that ever comes. But, I mean, that's the whole role, though. Th this is weird. Let me see what they're doing. Let me see what they're doing. <laughs> BT is meant to be an opt-in defensive option for when you really need the added durability. It's not meant to be rushed. I knew it. I knew it was being rushed. So that your ADC can become a tank before everyone else gets their builds. Yep. Uh, a flat nerf, especially in the early game, should push Bloodthirster back a lot. So like I said, exactly what I said. I was right on the money. BT was being built early because that's when you get the most use out of it because ADCs want to survive the laning phase and not get fucked. And that's when it's going to be most optimal. And now they made it not optimal. Let's see how badly they fucked it. Uh, so the shield is going down from 180 to 100. And then... Uh... Okay... It's going from 450 to 400. Honestly, I don't see this making that big of a difference. Obviously, looting, losing the 80 health on the shield is kind of ass. But the biggest reason you got this was because it gave you everything you wanted and needed early game. Having IE early is nice. But why do you build IE when you can survive and like scale harder, right? Because getting IE early, while it does help, it's going to feel way better when you have more damage. So you want to get Bloodthirster first in my eyes. Or at least sometimes, not forever. I honestly think removing the AD health doesn't matter. It's the fact that it gives you crit, a lot of AD, and lifesteal. That's the most important part. The shield is just the cherry on top. Now, granted, if they make the shield useless, obviously this item is going to become less appealing. But I don't think they're hitting the core of the problem, nor do I think they should. So even though this nerf is stupid and it doesn't make sense, I think it's good that it doesn't make sense because I think ADC should still have this. So they made a mistake, but it ended out with what i wanted in my favor so that's not bad so bloodthirster stupid nerf but i like that it's stupid nerf nasher's tooth didn't they buff this thing i feel like they buffed nasher's and uh i think maybe it got a little out of control but i don't know again i haven't played so let's see continuing on the past few buffs to mage items nasher's tooth is up next the next item the item previously represented a complex sorry a complete package for attack speed mages but that was lost when mythic items were meant to be the new first purchase. Uh, which they're not even always the first purchase. While the group of champions this applies to is pretty small. Like, I don't even know who uses this. Azir. Um, Azir. Uh, we've adjusted our mindset to be more open to first item legendaries. Which they said they were open to that in the beginning, but I guess they lied. The Masters is being adjusted to fit better in that space. So what are they doing? They're increasing the gold. And they're giving it ability haste. Okay, cool. So it's better as an early game item, but it costs slightly more. That's fine. Navori. Navori quickly. So this is a weird case of... I think it's another Zeri moment for me. Zeri, when she came out, I wanted to build her crit. I was very much against all of her other builds. I was like, no, she needs to be a traditional ADC. No, no, she's building something weird. And that got really upset. But then once I played the different build, I instantly fell in love with it, and I didn't want to build Crit Zeri anymore. <laughs> and then they took that away from us. But I think this is a case where it's like, I just always prefer IE. I always prefer doing more damage as ADC, even though Navori gives you a lot of uh, versatility. It gives you a lot of... Um, not even just versatility, it gives you a lot of uh, safety. 
right? Because you have your abilities up. A lot of the time, the people who will build this are people with, you know, movements, or not movement speed abilities, but movement abilities, or people who mainly do damage with their abilities. So I could see Lucian building this, Zaya building this, you know, fuck it, even Ezreal potentially building this, right? Because Ezreal is not going to build IE. So basically, anyone who really relies on their cooldowns, or just in general, I know for Zeri, it's really good because she could just spam her E like crazy because it double procs off the auto and this. It double procs the cooldown of it. It going down on cooldown. But overall, I don't know how I feel about it because I never want to use it because I'm always a damage person. The bigger the damage, the more I'm going to do it, which is why I never build um, GA. I mean, I have my other reasons for not building GA, but overall, I'm more of a damage guy, so... I never really liked this item in general. So let's see what they're doing to it. I honestly don't know. Navori Quickblades is the best performing ADC capstone by a small amount. Okay, so not by a big amount. The fact that it's out DPSing Infinity Edge due to resetting auto attacks, self buffs makes it hard to pick anything else. I didn't know that. Okay, wow. That's very stupid. So lowering that reset should make the comparison a bit more fair. So it's close to IE, but it's outperforming IE, which is just straight damage. This should be more utility. And it's not, it's literally beating IE in damage, so they're lowering its utility. Um, so instead of 15% of the remaining cooldown, it's 12%. Honestly? Eh, that's alright. I still don't like this item, but uh, it's alright. I don't think ADC is OP though, so I don't like these changes. Okay, Bloodline. Bloodline is pretty much only used by ADCs and some select top laners. It's never really used by junglers. It's obviously not going to be used by mid laners not used by supports mostly by adcs very little top lanes like i i can think of like yorick using it maybe i doubt fiora is going to use it but maybe she could too irelia might use it maybe but they all prefer the attack speed except yorick yorick prefers the lifesteal aside from yorick i don't really know who else top lane could use it but this is the most used thing about adcs because again think about it right you want to have as much lifesteal and healing as an adc as you can early game because that's the main thing you want to get past, and healing is just generally good for that. The more healing you have, the better you are as an ADC. So, with what they're doing with I, or sorry, not IE, with what they're doing to BT, plus how they view ADCs in general, I'm assuming they're going to nerf this. And if they nerf this, I already think it's a tragedy, because since Legend Bloodline has come out, it's been nerfed a lot. It's been nerfed just overall from the healing nerf, that massive healing changes they did because they hated healing, and then it's been nerfed even after that. So to have it nerfed again, I feel like it's just kind of putting the nail in the coffin. And this is what I see with a lot of the runes happening in League of Legends. I see it's not them buffing up other runes. It's them... Oh, hold on. Nah. Alright, my grandparents are going to bed. But anyway, what ends up happening with the runes, with ADCs, and the runes in general, is instead of raising the other runes up, they just cut one down until the, the next runner-up is the best one. And then it's too good, so they cut that one down. And they're always cutting it down to size. They're never really buffing it. So it is lowering the power fantasy. The power fantasy in League was getting out of control. The healing fantasy was getting out of control. The durability fantasy got out of control for a little bit too. I always say this when it comes to balancing. I think there needs to be some sort of fantasy. And they should change it, depending on the season. Or, you know, have multiple fantasies in one season. But what they're doing is just... They're having fantasies from like big changes, big reworks, right? And then they're just chopping them down until another one is like the best one because it's the next runner up. And then they're chopping that one down too. And they're just going to end up chopping down everything until they get ready to where everything is so bad that they're going to do a big massive rework of everything. Everything's going to be OP and then they're going to repeat the process. It is a very much more roundabout way of what I'm saying. It's way longer. It is still similar to what I'm saying, but what I'm advocating for is to do it more in a way that doesn't hurt the players that doesn't feel as shitty because the way they're doing it now is like a long downward slope it's very gradual but the slope is going down on the graph the thing i'm like you know saying is just have one slope be up and then when it goes down have something else go up but overall everything's just going down with like the way they're doing it now i feel like but anyway let's see what they're doing bloodline is the most picked adc rune in league slot in the legend slot by far and well no duh Contributing to ADCs being generically tanky instead of opting into durability when it's needed. See, I don't like when they say generically tanky. They're not tanky. You can kill them very easily. It's just if you don't kill them, they're going to heal back. They are not tanky. 
This is a stupid thing that they're saying here. I don't understand this. The rune is meant to be a choice, not automatic. Well, when you keep cutting down the other runes, why would we not use this one until you cut it down and we're forced to use the other ones until you cut those down too? The nature of the way in League things are is they're going to use whatever is the best thing. Usually League cannot get the sweet spot of, oh, this is probably just as good as that or it's niche, right? It's usually there's a definitive answer and you're going to go with that. Like the other the other legend um, runes are not as good as Bloodline. You'd never take them. Well, you would in, in certain scenarios, right, that are niche. But most of the time you wouldn't because Bloodline is just so much better. They're not even close most of the time. But that, again, has to do with the nuance. If it's the ADC role, they value healing more. But overall, how bad are they doing this? So lifesteal per stack is going down. Max health on 15 stacks is going down. So overall, they're lowering the amount of lifesteal you're going to get even more so. And I didn't even know you got max health. So honestly, I would be fine with them even nerfing that more than taking away the healing. Because it really just feels like any healing is just... Riot's like PTSD about like, we can't have healing. We can't have healing in the game. No more healing. Like, it's it's really, really bad. It's really, really bad. So, after this, I see lethal tempo. I'm even more scared now. I'm even more fucking scared now, dude. They The same thing I said about Bloodline is basically going to be repeated with lethal tempo. Why would you use anything else unless it's niche? Obviously, you can get away with using lethal on Lucian, but you're most likely gonna go PTA. But aside from that, aside from PTA on Lucian, what, or Conquer on Lucian, what the fuck else are you gonna go on ADCs? It just makes sense because it's the best thing. And guess what? Lethal tempo got abused by other people, so it got nerfed and it hurt ADCs even more, right? Like, top lane was abusing lethal, so they had to nerf it, and it got ADCs in the crossfire. I feel like ADCs can just never have something good. At least something good for too long. So, how bad are they nerfing this? Please don't be bad. Please don't be bad. Only to Bloodline, lethal tempo is the most picked rune for ADCs, which I explained why. By a long shot, which makes it a good target for removing power from the role at large. The role's not fucking strong! There are many champions where they'll never give up this level of attack speed, and that's understandable. It's not just the attack speed, it's the range, too. But for everyone else, there's more than just one viable keystone out there. No, there's not, because you guys set it up that way. When there's another viable keystone, you nerf it because it's the best one. They're so stupid. Buff the other ones, don't nerf this. Like I said, overall, League is just on a downward slope of everything feels shittier and shittier, especially for ADCs. But just in general, they're just going to keep nerfing it until everything's so bad where they're going to rework everything and make everything OP and then we're going to follow the same thing. It's so annoying. But anyway, what are they doing? Attack speed for ranged users. Only for ranged users, by the way. They don't care about melees anymore. Whenever they nerf this keystone for melees, they also hit the ranged one. But whenever they hit the ranged one, they don't care about melees. They're just going to leave it the same. It's so fucking... Oh my god, so this gets me so angry. Anyway, attack speed for ranged users. 30 to 24, so we're losing 6% early, which is a little bit. And then 54 to 54, so it's still the same late game, but it's maxed out way later. So at level 12, it would be maxed out. Now it's maxed out at 18. So you're still going to hit the same limit. It's just going to take way longer. Honestly, if this is the only nerf they're going to give it. I'll fucking take it, but this is the main issue I said before, too. The games don't last long, so when are you realistically going to, like, even hit this? But overall, it is a, a nerf. I don't know the exact values, like, you know, at level, like, 11, 12, 13. But, oh my god, why? This is so stupid. This is so dumb. It's like they, they give Vayne great buffs, and then they just shit on the roll in general. I don't get it. Okay, Drake changes. Maybe they're going to describe what's happening with ADCs and why they're doing this. In patch 12.14, we buffed the rewards for killing drakes to incite some early game action after the durability update. Changes achieved this goal, both more importance on the bottom half of the map will know duh, because that's where the dragon is, especially during laning phase. But the recent changes to bot lane, it's almost always correct to only focus attention on the dragon. Well, yeah, because it's a scaling buff. We're moving the dragon rewards for of the stronger buffs, namely Hextech, Back to a value between 12.13 and last patch. These aren't massive shifts to the power of the objective, 
but I meant to combine with general bodily nerfs to make the game feel a bit less decided based on the state of the bottom half of the map. You know what's so ironic? I always hear that bot lane is like the cost of the losing, you know, them losing the game, never the reason for winning, or mo most of the time, I don't want to say never. Most of the time what I hear is that jungle still decides the game, which is weird because, you know, they just fixed it, but I don't know, this is so stupid. So what exactly are they doing here? Removing the dragon rewards? So the buffs themselves or the gold they get? Let me see. So Hextech Drake is going down and that's the one that primarily buffs adc so you know makes sense and then the slow decay is getting changed too i think that was the most asshole ever but uh they're nerfing that too because you know why not just put something in the ground why stab it when you can kill it right why not do that so the infernal drake they're just overall lowering the power oh my god so it's losing four percent Ugh. you know it's funny too because there was a point in time where they said the dragons felt like not impactful at all. So they're going to be buffing them. I don't know if we're going back to the old values. I don't believe we are. Because I remember the old values were a lot less. Like the Mountain Drake was, I think, 3% back in the day. But it's sad to see them nerfed. But as long as they don't go back to the old values, I guess they're trying to get to a middle ground. Which I said before, right? Can't really do. But, uh guess we'll see but it's a little hard or it's a little sad to see again you know what they should have done instead of nerfing dragons buff herald why don't you buff herald buff the top side of the map who the fuck cares about herald why are we gonna get it when we can get dragon oh well i know let's incentivize getting herald so stupid ocean dragon is getting slightly nerfed honestly this is fine ocean dragon is probably the strongest one realistically because like i said not only do adcs benefit off early game healing everyone benefits off of it so aram adjustments I don't care. Clash, Bilge Water Cup. I don't care. Normal Q Conundrum. Okay, let's read this. What is this? We're looking on a few updates to improve your blind pick experience. Thing. These changes will go into effect late into the night on, Mar on March 31st, so in about 10 days. These changes will be so good you won't be able to resist tipping your hat in approval. Like, even a poor would jump for joy. But seriously, make sure you go check out Blind between April 1st and April 3rd. According to your local dates. Oh, I know what they're doing here. Bro, they fucking got me. Okay. So this is for April Fools. They're doing something for April Fools. Hopefully by that time, the uh, the pass is out. And I'm definitely going to check out what they're doing. But they're going to do something silly. Because the fact that it's only for normal queue. And it's for blind pick. And they're telling you to do it from April 1st to 3rd. Means it's an April Fools joke. Because the fact that it's so like limited... If it was an actual change, it wouldn't have an expiration date. The fact that it's only from April 1st to April 3rd means it's something funny. It has to be something for April, which is cool. I doubt it's going to be anything crazy, but, you know. Back in the day, Riot had soul. Riot, like, you know, added stuff that you could tell they had passion in. Now it's become a, court of, a sort of a corpse, a corporate corpse that's uh, being pulled by the strings of the investors of uh, Corpa. But, uh, you know, maybe they can get some of their soul back. Let's see. Okay, behavioral system. Bystander feedback. Players who were in a game where they were exposed to disruptive behavior but did not report themselves will receive a notification to inform them that we took action. That's really good. We know that even if you don't report, disruptive behavior harms your experience. You want to encourage players to report when they experience it. This is sort of a whatever change. I mean, I agree with it. I'm all for, like, curbing toxicity. I just hope they don't go off the deep end and they, they ban trash talk. But yeah, League is a very toxic game. Everyone knows that. <clears throat> but anyway, competitive. Let's see what they're doing. We're generally happy with how the LP game changes have been going, which, again, I haven't experienced. Uh, but we have some follow-up tweaks to make it even more smoother. So, LP win and loss amount when your visible rank approximately matches your MMR. So it goes up. That's really good. Slightly smooth LP gain loss was at extremes of MMR and rank disparity. Okay, I don't know what that means. Verify the lobby tooltip tool for rank duo Q restriction when one player's MMR is at master tier or above. So, mostly just nonsense changes. Changes that don't really matter, but 22 to 25 is pretty good. Mythic shop rotation, no one cares. Uh, leaving the mythic shop, no one cares. And then 32-bit client is getting axed soon, so make sure you get rid of your toasters. And then quality of life changes. Let me see this. Beagle will now gain max stun stacks when possessing Annie. That's crazy. 
Reflect this significantly shorter cooldown. Viego no longer tracks the cooldown of Azir's passive between possessions. <laughs> okay. And then bug fixes, we don't care. Even though this game is littered with bugs. Skin adjustments. Oh, let's see this. Pulse Fire S's, Broken Covenant Show, Revenge of Callista, and Broken Covenant Rakan. Oh, wow. An upcoming skin. So, this is the new skin uh, line. Like I said last patch, I'm going to go over the skins. I'm going to look at them. So let me actually get them in the background here. I haven't seen them yet. I don't know if there's a legendary. I don't know what's what. But it is a new line, which is good. So let me let me get all these up. We're going to have the uh, Milio theme playing in the background still. It's really fucking loud. Skin spotlights. Oh my god, I just saw a spoiler for the next skins coming out. Fuck. Fuck. It's the April Fool skins, though. But anyway, um, wait, wait, let me see something. Oh no, this is the fairy shit. Yeah, so we're about to get another event pass. Oh shit, this is good. Okay. So let's see all the skins that are coming out here. We have, let's see. Uh, so it's all the fairy court skins. So this is a brand new skin theme. I thought it was Elderwood. When I saw Milio's alternate skin, I honestly thought it was Elderwood. And it looks like from what I can see here, let me just get the YouTube up. It looks like from what I can see here that a lot of it is uh, the legendaries for Karma, which is like, what the hell? But honestly, fuck it. Give a legendary to a support. They actually need it. And I'm not being ironic about that. So let's see the skin. So we have Milio. We have uh, Ashen Guardian Shen. Is that on the client too? Yeah, that is. Okay, so that's the newish Ashen skin line. Okay. So we'll put that one near last. So Ezreal getting another skin. Fiora getting another skin. Katarina getting another skin. Oh boy. And she's getting the prestige. Callista getting a skin. I'm surprised about that. Oh boy, another Seraphid skin. Oh fucking boy. Okay. And uh, these are the previews, actually. Fuck, let me, let me get rid of all these. Um, shit. I clicked the wrong ones. Okay, here we go. So, Ezreal. Uh, where's Katarina? Oh, here's Katarina. Here's Prestige Katarina. Uh, Callista, Fiora, Seraphine. So, Fairy Queen Karma. So, this has to be the legendary, which, you know, somehow Seraphine's is longer, but I'm pretty sure the Karma one is the legendary. And then Milio, and then Ashen Guardian Shen at the last thing. And then we can see the new skins later on, but we're not going to go over those yet. So, let's see Fairy Knight Ezreal. We're just going to skim through this. I'm not going to make it as long as last time. This Splash Art, it's very Ezreal-esque. Um, we're getting to, to an issue with the Splash Arts personally, where I actually sometimes can't even recognize which champion it is anymore. I would not be able to tell that this is Ezreal sometimes. I feel like I can can sort of tell because obviously if you look at the whole thing but i'm looking just at the portrait right this wouldn't instantly strike me as ezreal it's mostly ezreal but not instantly let's see the in game definitely very colorful it really does to me share the same theme as elderwood personally but uh i mean we gotta see the effects let's see the effects all right i don't care about the turnaround i don't care about his effects or his like back either well actually let's see the back Oh yeah, look, look, ooh, he's collecting flowers. This is such an Ezreal skin. I'm not going to explain what that means, but for those who know, you know. The effects are not bad. The effects are pretty cool. Let's see the W. W is not bad either. Very mystical. I swear to God, this could just be Elderwood. I can honestly see the fairy ship being in Elderwood. The Elderwood line. Not bad. I mean, I personally don't really like the theme of fairies, but I could be surprised. Ooh, the E is a little smoky. Okay, interesting. And then where's the ulti? Where's the ulti? Okay, that's his crit. Oh, there's the ult. Fuck, I missed it. Ooh, okay, the ult looks kind of nice. Overall, not a bad skin. He has, like, little fairy wings when he ults. It's so stupid. Eh, as real skin's eye, right, I guess. Right, let's actually fucking like get the music out of here. I want to hear the skins. Here we go. Fairy Court Katarina. Let me turn on my music. Since we're here. There we go. Alright, Fairy Court Katarina. Enough of this fucking Milio theme. 
Okay, so the Katarina skin looks interesting. I don't like how all the fairy skins are sort of barefoot. I feel like that's a foot fetish thing, but uh, whatever. On, you won't see me stab you. Yeah, 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 Katarina. I like the end game. It looks a little bland, especially comparing it to the Ezreal one. <laughs> but um, it's definitely different. Oh, ooh, those wings are nice. Okay, let's see the Q. He's not bad, I guess. It looks very faded. It looks sort of ghostly almost. But that might honestly be purposeful because of the uh, prestige skin. They might have put a lot more effort into the prestige the prestige skin to make it pop. So they might have made this one actively worse, actively more faded, to make the prestige skin like jump out more. I'm surprised she doesn't have butterfly wings. It's not bad though. It definitely looks more ghostly than anything to me. It very much reminds me of um of the Halloween one. I forgot what it's called. The stupid like one where she's like a ghost. The dance of blades. The dance of blades. Honestly, eh, pretty whatever skin. I think it's a little worse than the Ezreal one. Let's see the prestige one. Flash art is very nice. See, I would not be able to tell this is Katarina. Like, I could sort of tell because of the blades, but to me, like, I can honestly almost think this is, like, LeBlanc or something because of the wings. Hmm. Like, I would not be able to instantly tell that's Katarina. It looks a lot older, too. Her face does not look right in the splash art. Ooh, but the prestige, yo, she has a nice figure. Oh, my God. Figure looks very nice. You have the Gwen theme playing too. Yeah, so overall this skin already looks way better than the uh than the regular version. Well you can. Okay, let's see the effects. It's a different back, right? Or is it the same back? Oh my god, what a beautiful butterfly. Very purple themed, I like it. I don't think we really have a purple Katarina skin yet. I'm not too sure, though. Oh, uh, okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, this looks way better. This is a really good prestige skin. This is a really good one. Way better than the MF one from last patch. It even shows how long the Q's gonna last, so that's really good. Yeah, this is way, way better. Way, way better. Extremely way better. The old, where's the old? Oh my god, yeah, that's pretty. Okay, next time, the Katarina skin so far is the best one. It's still not strong again, it's not to my liking, but oh boy, yeah, look more fucking like shoeless people, more fucking feet. Oh, okay, the Callista skin looks really nice to me. It kind of looks like a lesser version of Marauder because Marauder Callista, in my opinion, is her best skin, which is weird too. I thought Marauder line was fucking shit. But uh, Marauder Callista is extremely good because it's so different from her normal. Her normal is like blues, and the Marauder is just straight red. So, okay, let's see the back. Where's the back? What the fuck? Is she like the general of the fucking butterflies? What is this? That is a shitty back. Okay, excuse me. I can already tell this is probably going to be her best skin. This is most likely going to be her best skin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, the effects are really good. This is probably her best skin. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, yep. Best skin. Passive looks amazing. The E's look really fucking pop out and bright. This is nice. The W's look eh. The W's are probably the weakest part of the kit. Did they show the ulti yet? Oh no, they're showing the... Yeah, I really like this skin. This skin is not bad. I think it's her best skin. Ooh, the ult looks really good too. Holy shit. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Yeah, Callista's skin is not bad. Callista's skin is pretty good. Alright, Fiora. Fiora skin. Ooh, see this splash art definitely looks like Fiora. It looks kind of like Camille, honestly, though. I don't know who did the, the art for this, but their faces look very old. 
Like, Katarina looks old in hers. Splash Art Fiora looks really old in hers, too. And, of course, she's barefoot. Of course. I don't know why, but I have a big issue with that. Why the fuck are they barefoot? Alright. Let's see the back. I, I keep forgetting the sound is so low because of the I hate music. Alright, let's see the back. Come on. <laughs> come on. Here it is. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. That's a pretty cool back. Very fairy-esque, just like the rest of them. Okay. This looks like a pretty good skin, too. This skin looks more uh, dreamlike, more fantastical. This is what I think the, uh, the base Katarina skin should have been. The base Katarina skin just looks faded. This skin actually looks like what it should be, though. This skin looks like it has color. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Again, I don't particularly like the palette, but it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. I don't think this is a very manly skin line, though. The E is kind of weak, but whatever. Okay. Alright, let's see the ult. The ult better be going crazy. Eh, the ult's alright. Let's see what happens when you proc all of it. What does it look like? Ooh, okay, the little little motif in the little grass. Honestly, pretty okay skin. Pretty alright. Alright, Seraphine. God knows why she's getting another skin, but let's see. Okay, the splash art obviously is her. Anyone can tell this is Seraphine. It's a really good splash art, though. Ooh, the in-game looks really good. Holy shit. See, this is the sad part. I think Seraphine has really good skins. Of course, she's barefoot, too. I think Seraphine has really good skins. I think, like, it's a tragedy, like, her skins are really, really good. So, uh, even though I think the skin's really good, I'm trying to compare it to, like, Ocean Song and stuff. Oh my god, the colors are insane. Holy shit. Ooh. You know what's so crazy? I haven't used base Seraphine in so long because I have the ultimate, so I barely know what her base shit does. Oh. Oh! What the fuck? Is this its own unique dance? There's no way. I, again, I don't know what her base stuff is. Is that a little beetle? What the? She made it beautiful! Damn. Honestly, this is still a pretty good skin. Even comparing it to like Ocean Song and, and stuff, I think this is a really good skin. It definitely fits their Seraphine's, uh, you know, whole theme. If anyone's gonna be fairy-like, it's definitely gonna be Seraphine, right? You know what I think they did? They literally just looked at the Lux skin and was like, hmm, what are the different forms of Lux? What haven't we used yet? Oh, fairy? Okay, she has a fairy form. Let's make that into a skin line. Oh, okay, this looks very nice. Okay, the E. It looks, see, this is the problem. I think this E looks very similar to some of the, uh... Oh my god. The Popstar Seraphine one. The KDA one. AKA the ultimate one. Oh my god, there's three. Um... It's still a pretty good skin. The ult looks really nice, too. Honestly, the model itself just looks so good, and the effects look really good, too. Dare I say, some of the effects look even better than, like, the ultimate. <laughs> Oh, nah. Jesus. Yeah, honestly, not a bad skin. But what the fuck is the rest of this? Okay, it's a whole bunch of bullshit. It has its own little fairy song. What the hell? Okay. And then the quote-unquote what I believe to be the legendary... Very queen. Arma. Very sexy. Very sexy. Oh my god, look at that pose. She still has no shoes, but oh my god, she's beautiful. Holy Jesus. It really reminds me of uh, Morgana. It gives me a lot of Morgana vibes because of the butterfly wings in the back. But let's see how this is about to be. Oh yeah, this is the legendary. The fact that Seraphine's one was longer than this is a little concerning, though. Ooh! That is hot. Dude, the colors for this thing are amazing. 
I like how they have all the different colored fairies. This is really good looking. Holy moly. This dance looks so stupid, by the way. Oh my god. <laughs> I really like the pose she has when she's idle. She's just like standing on one leg. Oh my god. That is amazing. I love the multicolors. There's like green, pink, blue, light blue, and then purple. Like, it, this is amazing. Yeah, those look kind of clean. The skin looks very clean. It is a very clean looking and feeling skin. Okay. I want to know what makes it legendary, though. She must have like some weird form and shield, which hopefully we're going to see. Oh! Oh, yeah, that looks definitely uh, up there. Yeah, the fucking, like, the ulti form looks crazy. Holy shit. It looks so clean. The animations are so clean. Holy moly. The colors are really nice, too. They really pop out. It made them very saturated. Holy Jesus, that color. It's like universal. Like, that's like. It, it reminds me of, um. The forest calls. Of, uh. Fuck, what the fuck is the ultimate luck skin called? Winter's Bite. A Winter's Bite. It reminds me of Elementalist Lux. These are pretty nice, too. Holy shit. Wow. Nature's Wrath! Nature's Wrath! What the fuck? Interesting. I wonder if she puts points in her ult, how it's gonna look. Oh yeah, that's definitely visible. Honestly, not a bad legendary for Karma. Not bad. Oh yeah. Wait, so is that with like some sort of butterfly? What is that? They didn't put timestamps, so they're not saying anything. I think there's a butterfly that spawns on you eventually though. Yeah, it looks like there is. Or, hmm, I don't know. Uh, I'll finish with taking in game. Definitely one of the best skins in the game to date. Wow. The skin is another tier of gorgeous. Wow. The shape of the art with those huge wings, all the effects they have added to the death abilities. Now it is the legendary. So apparently the skin had some drama too. Wow. Holy shit. Pretty good. Pretty good. Interesting. Yeah, definitely a very good looking skin, if nothing else. <laughs> and there's just grass that's on her. Bruh. A fairy does not stop for death. Oh my god. Okay. The run animation is pretty good. I love how they include all the fairies. That's really good. This is a very good skin. Very good skin. Oh my god, look at the old Jesus. The fact that her dress flows up too is that it's a very nice effect. But overall, not bad. Not bad. I'd like to know specifically what made it more legendary, aside from the really clean animations and the ulti effect, but let's see Milio's last. So Milio's is probably going to be pretty weak, but let's just see it just in case. Look at this little uh, Fumigo. I've been training, like, all day. Oh yeah, all day. I think for an alternate skin, this is pretty good. The effects on this go way hard. What the fuck? Dude, you know what they look like? They look like little peaches. His Fumigos look like little fucking peaches. <laughs> Bruh. He's like a turtle. He can't, like, put himself up right. The Fumigos. Oh, this is a really cool bag pretty cool. I very much like the effects on this skin. The effects on this skin are really nice. The cherry pink, it's like peach pink. Really nice. Ooh, okay, this skin's very hot. Ooh. The animations are clean too. They did really good with him. Wow. Oh my god, that's so cute. It's like a little peach fairy. That's amazing. Wow. 
These animations are insane. Holy Jesus. Ooh, that shield looks nice, too. Oh, it winks at you! Yo, that's so cute! It doesn't wink at you every time. It only winks sometimes. Oh my god, that's amazing. The skin is amazing. Holy shit, this all looks nice. It's quick, though, but it looks nice. Honestly, I'm very much more surprised by this skin. This skin is a very good alternate skin. And of course, you have to choose. Wow. Wow. He's fucking dead. Okay, overall, not bad. All right, let's see the last skin in the bunch. The, the odd one out, the odd duckling, Ashen Guardian Shen. So, let's talk a little bit about the Ashen Guardian skins. So the biggest thing was the Ashen Guardian skins when they came out, or the Ashen skin line in general when it came out, it came out with Pantheon, or was it Pantheon? No, no, it was Pike. The Pike skin came out was a resounding success, and then they just made like Ashen Knight like heartthrobs with no armor. The whole point of the skin line was to kind of be alluding to Dark Souls or like, you know, heavily knighted, heavily armored knights. Then it literally became just like, you know, ghost people without armor, right? And then they kind of fixed it because they heard the feedback. A lot of people were upset. It looks like Shen's a pretty good one, though. Shen's skin is pretty good. I just don't like how one of his arms is uh, is out in the in the cold, bare open. But honestly, it could be a thematic choice because, like, you know, maybe his arm got chopped off or something. I can honestly see them, you know, making an excuse for it. And I think it's fine because the whole rest of his body is armored. And he does have a spirit arm, I, I believe. So, <laughs> excuse me. Oh, they're going to show the Ember Woken one, too. Holy shit. Interesting. Oh, the effects on the Q are really good. Holy shit. The Emberwoken story looks very nice. This is an honestly just like choose your fancy sort of thing. I mean, it should be too because the Emberwoken is a promo. But, oh, Okay. With balance steps. Yeah, I don't know if I like, um... Oh, you see the little ghost on it. I feel like Shockblade is still pretty similar to this, honestly. This isn't bad though, but I think Shockblade is definitely better. If not better than the same level. You get some shitty wings there, I mean, it's okay. The biggest thing is the music, I like the music, but the spike skin will never be beat. Go! See, it looks very storm-like again, very much like shock blade. The little ghost on the on the sword on the W is pretty good too, but overall if the pike one is still better. So Alright, shut up, Shen. We don't care. Alright, so overall I believe that's all the skins. And then we could take a look at their splashes here, because we've been going for almost an hour and a half now. So overall, I mean the splashes were a little weird. Some of the skins were eh, like the Ezreal skins, whatever. Your skins, I. The Karma skin's pretty good. The Prestige Katarina one's good. Milio's one is honestly one of the best, probably right under um, Karma's. If I had to give them an order, I would say Karma's number one, Milio's number two, Callista and Seraphine are tied for three, but for Callista, it's probably her best skin. Everyone else can come after that. I guess Prestige Katarina, then everyone else. And then in his own little corner is Ash and Guardian Shen. Overall, not bad. Not bad overall. But what are we going to rate the whole patch as a whole? Honestly, with all the ADC nerfs, I mean, again, right? This is where, like, old me would have given Riot the, uh, would have given Riot the benefit of the doubt. But this was a very small patch. You know, despite it being a small patch, I made it over an hour and a half almost. It's pretty much going to be an hour and a half. Despite it being this small, a lot of changes happened, which are like really bad feeling. So even if they were necessary, I don't really agree anymore with Riot's balancing systems. And, you know, just from like matchmaking alone, this has been the worst season to play. And personally, I personally hate the season more than any other season. But uh, just with balancing, I feel like things aren't that good anymore. The game doesn't feel that good which is weird. But we're getting Milio, so Milio's not bad. So Milio's gonna save this patch a little bit. Ash buff is whatever. A soul nerf is sad. Mundo buff is whatever. Helio buff is okay. 
Crown buff is stupid. Bane buff is massive. Probably the most massive thing we have here. Vagar's getting nerfed. Yumi's getting nerfed. And then ADC items are getting nerfed. All the ADC stuff's getting nerfed. Honestly, dragons are getting nerfed. This is the big patch of fuck you. I was honestly going to rate this patch like a 3 out of 10. But honestly, just because of Milio and the Vayne stuff, I'll rate it four and a half out of ten just because the vein ones are kind of insane if the vein ones were any less than this i would easily rate this patch a four out of ten this is not a good patch i feel like this patch was sort of ass and me spending an hour and a half of my time on this kind of got me upset but overall i would say 4.5 out of 10 uh mark merrill's that's pretty much it We'll be back in about two weeks to go over the next one, and we'll actually be playing ranked and stuff so we can actually speak on some of the changes, hopefully. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed.